Now I'm going to endeavour to keep this review spoiler free, um, but I can't guarantee that. For a start, there's a lot I can't show you. I can't even show you what the board currently looks like without going into spoiler territory because it's just covered in, in stuff. So I'm going to start by talking about the ins and outs of the game and stuff that you can see on opening the game. Once you open the game, there's stuff that you can see. I won't go beyond that, but then I'm going to start showing you the components and I will put up a small spoiler warning there. I'm not going to directly say anything spoilery, um, but you might gleam something or you might see something. or you, it's, it's just possible there'll be something in there that constitutes a spoiler. So I'll put that warning up just before I do it, but before I just want to talk about the game. First of all, those of you who have no idea what this game is are probably wondering how on earth a board game can have spoilers. Well, this is essentially the second game in the series. There was a game before this called Risk Legacy, which is basically Risk. Um, but with the legacy feel, and this is Pandemic with the legacy feel. And what the legacy feel is, is you are moulding the game as you play. Um, so for example, you are um, putting stickers on the board, stickers on um, characters, you are opening packs. In Risk Legacy, you are building cities and things on, It's a, again, it's a rough map of, of uh, the world, and you're playing Risk, but you're building cities, um, and you're you know, blowing up territories, and you're putting fuel, uh, ammo supplies and things down. You're putting things on the board that change how the territories work. You're also gaining abilities on um, the races that you're playing. You're gaining a special, uh, special abilities that they can do. Um, so Risk Legacy is doing that. And in Risk also there's packs that you open that change the rules. So there'll be a pack on it that says, you know, open once um, all the cities have been built. So there's like a finite number of cities. You open that pack, open once... Uh, one of them says open when, once three missiles have been fired into combat, into the same combat. And you open that pack. Um, and there's stuff like that. So there's packs that you open that, that cause things... Um, to cause the rules to change in Risk Legacy. Pandemic Legacy works similarly, although um, it's, a, it's a little bit more complicated, I'll go into detail soon, but basically the game is altering. You are putting stickers on the board, changing how the board works. You're putting stickers on your character cards, quick flash day, to change how your characters work. Um, you're adding cards to the game, you're taking cards out of the game. You're just changing the way the rules kind of work. As an example, you have um, your quick sheet action cards that tell you all the actions you can do. Then at one point in the game, you gain another one, um, which is blank, and you start sticking stickers to it to give you for your extra actions. So you start learning new new abilities, basically, and you're going to fill up um, the second action uh, uh, section, second quick sheet. So that's just one way in which you know things change. You have to learn new rules, and you have to learn how to do new things um, as the game evolves, essentially. The difference between this and Risk Legacy, Risk is... Um, kind of random, it's, it's how the players react, it changes the world and everything. Pandemic Legacy has a slightly more story-driven basis. You have, in Pandemic Legacy, there is a thing called a Legacy Deck. I won't take the our Legacy Deck out because I want to keep it in order, because you, you have to keep it in order. And if you mess it up, then it's gonna, you know, it's quite complicated to rearrange it, because you're not allowed to look at it. But these are the cards we've already drawn. Um, so you have this thing called the Legacy Deck, which you draw at specific times. So it says stop. This is just the top one, so it says read this before setting up your first game. And then they all have their own instructions as to when you draw them. And then they will um, change the rules of the game and add new things into the game. Um, and you, But you draw them in, a, in in order. They have a specific set order and that won't, won't change from game to game. So if you played this a second time, you'd still be drawing the Legacy deck essentially exactly the same way. Um, and, and the game, the story essentially would progress. The way you change the board would be different, but the story would progress the same way. Um, so there's, there's a unique story in Pandemic Legacy that's going to be told with this Legacy deck, um, which is something that Risk Legacy doesn't have. Risk Legacy is just, just just random. But down to basics, as you may be able to see from what you can see of the board here, it is basically Pandemic. We've got the map of the world, all the same cities. Some of the routes have changed slightly. They've It's actually slightly easier to get around um, this board than it is the Pandemic board. Um, but there's reasons for that. It kind of has to be. Um, so yeah, some of the routes are such changed, but the cities are all the same and the map is basically the same. One thing about this map is, is and it, it's not explained at first, but um, it is broken up into continents, more or less. So you've got North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and um, the Pacific Rim. And you don't know, at the start of the game, you don't know why that is. It's just broken up into these sections. You have no idea why it comes into play later. But yeah, it's, it, that's the only um, major difference here. But yeah, you've got the the world map with all the cities. You've got your player pawns, your um, little uh, research station starts in Atlanta. It's got nice plastic pieces to, to cover up your um, for your disease cures and uh, your outbreak meter. If you want to know the rules to Pandemic, I did a Pandemic review uh, not that long ago, so do watch that. I'll put a link up here and I'll explain how Pandemic works in that. Um, but the game starts basically as Pandemic. It's got all the same components. Um, you've got your player deck, 
your infection deck. Uh, it's essentially set up here, as I've got it here, is, is basically just Pandemic. And that's how the first game begins. However, one thing you will notice when you first open the game is that, it, as the rules state, the months progress. So the first two months, you have to complete one objective. That would mean cure the diseases, because you're playing Pandemic here. But then, as of March and April, you have to complete two objectives. And then on, you have to complete three objectives. Um, all the way down to December, where it goes back down to two. I'm not sure why that is. But yeah, you have to complete multiple objectives to win the game. We currently have... Four, I won't show you them specifically, but we currently have four objectives in play. Um, and we have to complete three of them uh, where we are in the game at the moment. So, yeah, that alters the game a fair bit. Uh, you've, you've got to do different things and you've got to plan, sort of, um, control the board in a, in a different kind of way. And the diseases already act differently um, than, than they did at the very start. As I say, opening game is basically Pandemic. But within that first game, thanks to the Legacy deck um, and, and ways things are evolving, it very quickly starts to change into something uh, new and, and, and unique. Setup comes with five Epidemic cards, although we've noticed that the infection rate track goes up higher than that. Um, I don't know what that means. But yeah, five Epidemic cards and you always play with five. There's no variable difficulty. You always play with the full, with the, with the five, which is um, sort of medium difficulty on regular Pandemic. Um, but you always play with that. It also comes with your event cards. This is another way that the game alters. Because it's a progressive story, your, uh, it's going through the year. So every game is a month. So you've got January to December that you play. You, if you win, you move on to the next month. If you lose, you play the month again. So you have a second chance to try and win the month. And then the second play, win or lose, you move on to the next month. But that matters for these event cards. As regular Pandemic players will know, these you have the events like your um, airlift and all the other events that you recognise from Pandemic. There's a few new ones as well to incorporate the new rules. But how they're described is these are funded events. So these are the world funding you in order to um, tackle the diseases that are, are ravaging the planet. The world's in an apocalyptic style event and, and the world, they're giving you funding. So you start with four funding, which means that you can pick, and you always pick, don't do it randomly like you do in Pandemic, you pick four of these cards that go in to your player deck, which you may then draw um, and have use of throughout the game. If you win a game, the world starts to calm down and they reduce your funding. Um, so they reduce your funding by two. So if you won your first game, your funding would go down to two from four. And then if you won your second game, your funding would go down to zero, which ours did. We won two in a row and we had zero funding for a little while. Um, if you lose, the world starts to panic and they increase your funding. So it goes up by two. So you go if you lost your first game, you go up to six funding. So you get to pick six cards and so on, up to a maximum of um, ten and down to a minimum of zero. So your, your, whether your win last lose rate um, alters your funding and alters how many event cards you get in your deck, uh, which can be a big deal. We've um, we won a few games in a row and we were at zero funding for a bit and we were kind of worried it was going to kill us. It didn't quite kill us, but um, we managed to survive a little bit with zero funding and then it's all gone horribly wrong <laughs> as, as the game's evolved. But those are the major changes that I can tell you without spoilers. You've still got your disease cubes. I've taken the um, petri dishes out of my uh, regular pandemic in order to store them in. But you've got the like you've got the nice plastic ones from from like the the new version of pandemic, the plastic cubes rather than the wooden blocks that I've got in my version of pandemic. Um, the board's very pretty. It's all very uh, good production value. The cards are decent enough quality. Um, it's all it's all quite uh, neatly put together. The characters you start with are. Uh, the medic, the researcher, the scientist, the dispatcher, and the generalist, um, which is a weird one to start with. It's one of the expansion characters, um, which seems like a weird one to start with, but uh, it, ma it makes sense in a strange kind of way, especially as you can give them extra abilities. The generalist can take um, four abilities, whereas everyone else can only take two, I mean, beyond their starting abilities. You also have um, these civilian cards. so, And the reason you have these is because your characters can die uh, yes, your characters can take scars. You can take two scars to a character. You'll notice that our medic already has two scars. He's um, been in some dangerous situations. And if you take a third scar, you have to chuck that character away. That character is lost. They say lost, but you have to tear it up and throw it away. So they're dead, basically. Um, but yeah, you, you, take a, you take a third scar, get rid of the character card. You can no longer play as that character. And for the rest of the game, someone gets that person gets a civilian card. The civilian has no powers. They only take one wound. Um, they're pretty useless. I imagine that's really uh, quite a, a nasty thing to happen, especially as it comes with all four. So theoretically, everyone in one game, everyone's character could die and you'd be stuck with four civilians. Theoretically could happen um, because they're given one for each colour coded person. 
Uh, so yeah, that's that's a that's a scary thought. Other stuff that comes out of the box. So again, no spoilers here. And um, this is just stuff you're going to see as soon as you open your copy of Pandemic. You have this top secret dossier uh, pack, which basically has these five sheets of sort of um, openable windows that you pop open at certain times, and they've got stuff inside them. Um, sometimes stickers to put in the rule books, stickers to put on the board, um, bonus cards and things. It's just the legacy deck tells you when these things happen. Then you open the relevant window and uh, do what it says on the other side. Sometimes they say uh, things on them. There's a good example. This back sheet here. This back sheet here has got a bunch of yellow stickers on it. You now have confidential clearance, open package one. And this was open package three, open package four. What this means is the game comes with eight little boxes. We've opened four of them already, but it comes with eight little boxes. It doesn't sound like it's got anything in it. Weird. Um, the, yeah, that comes with eight boxes. Box number eight says open package eight if you lose four games in a row. So we're assuming that's some sort of boost if you're doing quite badly, um, or maybe a punishment for doing really badly. But yeah, the, these will be these will come up as you open stickers, the legacy deck, and you open stickers, then you'll be instructed to open packages. And they have stuff in them basically that won't fit in anything else. So they have like larger, larger bits in them. Um, I won't spoil what any of any of those were. I don't even know what those were, obviously. But I won't spoil the four that we've already opened. Um, but yeah, that's quite that's quite cool. Uh, they come up progressively. As I say, they come up progressively through the um, legacy deck, not through anything the players have done necessarily. Apart from number eight that says open if you lose four games in a row. This is they're all part of the story rather than something that you are doing. In Risk, it's something that you are doing, um, which causes these packages to be open. Whereas, as I say, this is a progressive story. That's where they vary. Also. Okay, let's pop up for a second. There's quite a lot going on here. You have this this big sheet here, and this is your rewards and um, your panic. So these are stickers. You can see this as again, and when you open the box, this sticker sheet is available to see. When you every game you play, you get to place two rewards or two stickers on the board or something, um, to reward yourself for you know for a game well played. And you can uh, positively mutate the viruses. If you've managed to eradicate a virus, you can give it a positive mutation. We haven't done that very much. We probably should have done. Um, but you can give it a positive mutation to make it easier to cure uh, in future games. You can give your character an extra ability. You can um, put unfunded events. These are event stickers that go on top of player cards, like the, the location cards. Um, they give you an extra event, essentially, in that deck. <clears throat> that's always there no matter what your funding level is and then you've got the starting research stations it means you can put extra research stations on the board so they will um, when you do game setup you place a research station in Atlanta obviously but then if you've got these sticks on the board you can also place research stations in those locations you'll notice they've got fiery ones these are the destroyed research stations the reason for that is because cities will panic that's what all these stickers are for every time a city has an outbreak it starts to panic and it starts at one which doesn't really do anything. But then it starts to riot, so two and three, and then it's a collapsing city, and then it's a fallen city. We've only got one fallen city on the board at the moment, uh, but we've got quite a lot of ones, as you can see. What that means is it makes it makes cities harder to move into, so you can, can't fly into cities that are rioting. You can't, you can, it's very difficult to walk into cities that are collapsing and fallen. Um, it's just, it just makes it harder to get around the board. Obviously, you want to manage the panic of your cities, you want to manage your outbreaks, um, but it's it's quite difficult. You can never avoid outbreaks completely. But you almost want to avoid the cities that are potentially going to outbreak because if you're in a city when it outbreaks, you get wounded or you get a scar. And one of the, these scars are basically um, negative abilities. So, uh, insomniac, reduce your hand limit by one card. Overcautious, you need one extra card of a disease color to discover a cure. Um, so these are negative effects that hit your character. As we say, our medic has got two of these. Um, and you can only take two. If you take a third one, you die. I think I said that earlier. Um, you have to destroy the character card and throw it away. So our medic's probably going to die before the end of the game, which is really annoying because he's one of the most powerful characters, as you may know. Um, but yeah, no. If you if you take these scars uh, every time you're in a city when it outbreaks. In addition to that, the rule book uh, has. Uh, you can see on the back here, it's got um, a sort of a tracker for your game. So we won, we won, we won, we won. So we won our first four games, and then we lost in May twice. May absolutely destroyed us. Things changed significantly in April, um, but yeah, and then we weren't prepared for May. We went into zero, May with zero funding, and we had to do three objectives. And no, we we, we just when did not survive that even close. It was it was a horrible massacre.
but the rule book as you'll see also has blank spots in it so it's got blank bits of this is this is the setup page you can see there's a whole section of setup that's just blank and then two more stickers there um so setup's going to change we don't know how there's a whole page I don't want to show you anything too um but there's a whole page that's just got blank spaces for extra rules so there's new rules being added in um into the game as it goes and these are um actions you can do or the way actions change or the way just the way things change in the game and the rule book um, um, reflects that and there's a lot more changes in the rule book than there are in risk legacy there's still some of them in the risk legacy but pandemic legacy has a lot a lot of them uh 25 i think uh, and that's pretty much all i can show you and um, without accidentally showing spoilers i'm not going to give spoilers um but i might accidentally give something as I, i'm going to show you the components in a second be and you might accidentally um, gleam some sort of spoiler from it, especially if I show you the board because the board's covered in stickers now um, and, and our character cards and stuff like that. You might accidentally see something you didn't want to see, um, but yeah, no, that's, so that's, that's the warning now. If you, if you just want um, the basic review, it's a really, really, really good game. If you like Pandemic, if you like the Legacy, if you, if you just like the sound of this sort of story progressive game, I thoroughly recommend it. It's excellent. Um, we really got into. We played six games in a row. As you saw, they've only managed to play once so far. We really want to play again. The design of it means that you kind of want to keep playing with the same group of people because um, it's a progressive story. You want to get your your group of three or four ideally, um, and then you want to play. We played, as I said, we played a whole run of games, um, and then you want to keep playing. Those people who play that will want to see the story progress. They'll want to know what happens next. And if you bring new people in, you're going to have to explain all the new rules and they're not going to have the excitement of when things happen for the first time. So you kind of, yeah, you kind of want to get your group and you want to play through the whole campaign just with that group. Um, whereas with Risk Legacy, people can drop in and out and come and go and it doesn't really matter. Just the game sort of evolves uh, in a relatively logical fashion. They're going to miss the excitement, obviously, of opening a new pack every now and then. But uh, Pandemic Legacy is, is very much about the story and you really um, want to see it through to the end. So... Um, just be prepared for that. Just be prepared to play that way. It's not like a drop-in, drop-out game. You're going to want to knuckle down with it with a few friends and, and just tackle it all the way to the end. How it's going to end, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to have at the end of this. Um, you could keep playing Pandemic on this board, I guess, but it's changed quite a lot. I don't know if the if it's going to be compatible to just keep playing once the board has completely changed. I don't know. And the thing is, it's called Season 1. I, what does that mean? I don't, is there going to be a Season 2 expansion? It's going to add on to what happens in season one. Um, I really have no idea. But yeah, no, it's, it's really cool. I'm looking forward to finding out how it ends and then seeing what season two is, I guess. So that's my recommendation. Definitely an excellent game. Um, I'm going to talk about the components now. Move away. If you don't want to, even the chance of seeing spoilers, um, then please stop the video. But if you, I'm not going to, as I say, I'm not going to purposefully ruin anything. So you'll probably be okay. Um, but just if you're over cautious, and if you're going to get the game anyway, then you then then I'm saying get it. Then you don't need to know any more information. Just get the game. Um, thanks for watching. If you're off, if you're not, have a look at the stuff with me. I'm trying to keep this quick because I've already talked about most of the game. I just want to show you some of the bits and pieces. So here we can see the board, and it's fairly typical pandemic. Um, you can probably already see that there's a few stickers about that, that I haven't explained. And we've got three research stations. Uh, that we start with now in our, in our setup as well as two other buildings that again i won't explain just yet and yeah you can probably see a few stickers about and uh, you can see these new routes across the bottom here that make it slightly easier to get between them um, south america and africa just because you kind of need those routes you can see that our africa is uh, not doing well it's quite a lot and yes there's, there's a lot of bad stuff happening in africa as you can uh, can see we've kind of let that one fall apart not let it but it has happened and a lot of it's very typical pandemic as we see the um player deck and the infection deck we can see here in the player deck is always an example of the unfunded event so the stickers that go on the card that turns it into an event card so now this this card can now be used either for its color um, for its city or as an event card and the way you lose pandemic are basically the same so if this deck runs out you lose if any of your uh, your cubes run out then uh, you lose and you've still got the outbreak track over here and we're worried that this is going to modify at some point. You don't want to be covering up these uh, these spots. But yeah, if that goes all the way down to the skull and crossbones, again, you lose. And then down here, you can see the, the curing track for the diseases. So we've got the uh, nice little plastic pieces that I've, I've managed to put in the wrong order here. Um, but yeah, no, you can see that the we've got some stickers down as well. So we've got some positive mutations. But we've also, you can see that the yellow has got a big green sticker on it, which is a... Uh, yeah, not so positive mutation, but uh, I won't have, uh, hopefully you can't read that and I would advise you not to read that because it might tell you 
um, quite a, quite a bit about the game. But yeah, no, you can see that the uh, yellow disease isn't doing too well, and we've managed. But we've managed to put some positive mutations on a couple of the others, which make them easier to cure. Here you can see the month tracker and our objectives. We have this little purple marker as well, um, the reminder token I think it's called, which hasn't been used that much. I don't know if it's going to have another purpose later on, but yeah, we haven't used it. I think we've used it maybe twice, or at least twice that we've been told to use it. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it was a component that came at the beginning of the game with no real explanation. So, and have a quick look at Europe here. You can see that London is rioting, and we have a couple of um, you know slightly panicked cities just next door. Uh, move along here, we can see that we've put a starting research station in Baghdad and a little green building in Cairo. Again, no direct spoilers, that's just uh, how we've got stickers on the board to change how our setup works. Let's take a little look at characters here. So here we can see the generalist, one of the starting characters. And so you can see here we've named our generalist Jane Doe, just because we thought that was kind of general and funny. But uh, yeah, it's actually quite important. So part of the setup in the game is every time you take a character for the first time, you have to create them, which means you have to name them. And that seems kind of um, unnecessary or kind of just like a silly addition, but it does actually matter. You do actually have to name your characters. It will come into play uh, as as the game uh, progresses. So you do yeah. Every time you take create, every time you play with a character for the first time, you have to name them, which is called creating a character. Um, she has one new ability. That we've given her. Her only starting ability is she may do up to five actions, same as the um, generalist from the main game or from the On the Brink expansion. Um, but she can take four upgrades, so she can take four extra powers, and we've given her one already. She can also take two scars, as I said, everyone can. But you'll see, you'll also see this when you open the game that uh, each character has two slots called relationships. So you've got relationship one, relationship two. Um, you can see that those those are there at the beginning of the game, but you don't know what they are, and they they come out a bit later. Um, but yeah, see, so at the start of the game, you don't actually know what that means. You can just um, see that there's going to be two slots for relationships, whatever that is. If we have a quick look at the medic now. You can see he's got a few more stickers on him. So he's got his starting abilities as a, as in normal pandemic. He's also got a relationship uh, as well as uh, an extra power, and then he's got two wounds, um, which are which are bad for him. And then we have our other characters, the uh, dispatcher, who's got nothing on him at all at the moment, and um, you know the scientist and the researcher and so forth. So there we have it, a very cool game. It's going to make it into a lot of critics and reviewers' top 10 of the year. It's definitely making it into mine and possibly my top 10 of all time. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see how the game gets. We'll see what happens when we get to the end. Um, but yes, thank you for watching. Check out my other board game review. Check out the Pandemic review. If you've uh, got all the end of this one and you still don't know how to play Pandemic, you can see it explained in there. Um, watch all my other stuff, all my other short films, all this other crap, and find me on Twitter and Facebook with the links in the description below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for new stuff. And I will see you next time. The end.